Jason made a very good point that although Spurs, it was their first defeat of the season, they haven't really blown any teams away with their either their victories or their performances. And I'm looking at their wins. I'm looking at their wins against Fulham, West Ham, and oh, sorry, their performances against West Ham, and Forest, and Wolves, and even even, even Southampton. First game of the season, they went one 0 down. Yeah. So um, I, I just I, I just wonder if what we saw last night wasn't wasn't something that we're not going to see more of this season. Well, no, but listen, I think every every team loses games. And yeah. I, I think first and foremost, yes, they they got beat by I mean, Sporting last night, two late goals. I think, I don't think it was a mentality issue last night, but this season they've won a lot of games undefeated in the Premier League, but they haven't played well consecutively for like 90 minutes where you've gone from start to finish while Spurs are at it. They've had periods in every single game where they've gone, they've had to scrape to get the result, but they're still getting the results. Sporting last night, I thought Hugo Lloris was in inspired form, kept them in it. But you think when you're getting down to the, the, the final stages of the game, you go, right, the main thing is here now, we're not going to win this game. It's just one of them games, but we don't get beat. The well, mentality well, is we don't get beat. Well, their first goal came from a corner, which you, Hugo Lloris Lewis... made a save. Yeah, fantastic save. So, oh, but again, that was. I think sometimes you try and critique absolutely every goal that you concede, every, you analyse everything. Oh, he wasn't in the right position. He wasn't on the back <coughs> post. Me. He wasn't going with his markers. But the delivery that came in was superb. And when someone puts in a ball of that quality, all it takes is the first man to just get a little touch on it and then anything can happen. And unfortunately for Spurs, it went into the far corner. So I, I wouldn't have an overreaction to that. But the fact that they've only lost one game this season and I don't think they've hit their best form yet, you'd probably go, OK, I, I'll take that. But it's just a, a blip in the road, a bump in the road against Sporting. But they have, they'll have to recover. And, and to be fair, they're fortunate that they're in a group mm. that they, sh they should be favourites to get out of. Mm. But you, their last game, right, where they played, was it Marseille, wasn't it, where yeah. Richarlison scored the two goals? They left it late in that, and they weren't particularly great. They left it late in this one to try and nick a point, and they came away with absolutely nothing. I, I just wonder, you know, they've got this tag of being Spursy, and that result, irrelevant of who it was, but it's very Spursy, just, you know, throwing the game away with minutes left on the on the clock. One of the question marks um, before the game was whether or not Conte was going to drop or play Son. Of course, mm. he started him. How much of a problem is it when a manager, not necessarily just Antonio Conte, when a manager becomes maybe too loyal to one of his players? <laughs> Well, to Son, he's obviously got credit in the bank. Last season, won the Golden Boot. Was the last parts of last season, he was fantastic. Do you know what I mean? Getting getting the goals yeah. that obviously propelled Spurs into that top four um, at the expense of Arsenal. But this season, he come back, and it's not just his goals. His, I don't think his all round play has been up to the standards of of seeing what he he can usually do, uh, Humington. But I think for for Son, it's a massive confidence boost that you've got a manager because this doesn't happen in today's game. Usually a player goes a couple of games, three, four games without a goal, they're out of the team. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's gone eight games, I think it might, actually, it might even be nine games without a goal and the manager still persists on picking him, starting him in games, should tell uh, Son the confidence that Antonio Conte has in him, the belief that he has in him, but there's going to come to a point and I think that point's coming up very, very quickly mm -hmm. where the manager needs to make a decision because I thought it was it was unfair that Kuliszewski got left out because I, I'm a big fan of his. Richarlison's earned his his time in the team with some of the performances he's put in of late and Harry Kane kind of speaks for himself. So at some stage, the manager's going to have to look at this scenario. Is, and go, is Harry Kane droppable? For who? He's got five goals in six Premier uh, League no, games. No, if, if Harry Kane was going through the kind of form that Son's going through... Well, we've seen him go through dry patches before, but we've seen him come out of that dry patch and go 10 goals in 10 games. Yeah. I guess it's the reaction for Son, but as I said, it's not just these goals at the minute for Son. It's his all-round performance isn't great. That like, the attacks are breaking down off him. He's running offside when he doesn't need to. He's getting a little bit anxious in front of goal. He's he's maybe taking an extra touch when he doesn't need to do that as well. So I think there is real concern there. But it's coming to a point where Antonio Conte has got to look at that front three and go, well, Kuliszewski hasn't really done anything wrong to be left out. Richarlison's playing really well at the minute, giving him a real impact, and Harry Kane plays down the middle. So I think sooner rather than later, if Son his form continues, he doesn't keep scoring, mm. he'll be out the team. What about the fact you've got Perisic playing wing, a wing-back role? Mm. So I just wonder how much that encroaches on where Son would be, the space Son would usually have. And also, a lot of the crosses that are coming in from the left hand are Perisic getting down to the byline as well. Mm. So I just wonder, does, does that have an influence on Son's form? The fact that you've got someone else, not cramping your style, but maybe getting into Operating areas. Space. Yeah. yeah, but Perisic is going wide. Son is in and around I know, the box. but then that, all of a sudden that Son's got less space to play with, right? Even if it's pulling a, a full-back or yeah, a centre-half over. I, I, get, I get that, but it, they played with wing-backs last, last season mm. and he, he was smashing goals in left, right and centre. This is just an attacking player 
going for what you call he's not going for a purple patch he's going for a bit of a gold route mm. but as I said it's not just the goals it's his all round play there was there was a chance last night where Harry Kane picked up the ball and him and Richardson went way too early usually someone would hold his run rolls in behind he'd get into the, the final third and he'd finish it off he ran offside Richardson ran offside when Richardson rounded the goalkeeper really nice finish so at the minute he's just a half a yard off it and even as I said they're playing the ball into him he touches a little bit off but that comes with confidence if the ball's going in the back of the net regularly like it was last season He's playing really well. He looks un- unplayable at times, son. And he has been a fantastic servant mm. for Spurs since he's got there really consistent with his goals. But he need, he's, a, he's in desperate need of a goal or he'll find himself out of the team. Okay. He has to. You, you've you've obviously, when you were a striker, you've obviously gone through moments where you've... Goal droughts, yeah. You've, yeah. you've lacked form. Yeah, mini, mini goal droughts. I just, <laughs> I, I just wonder from a manager's perspective, if you were a manager, what do you think benefits a striker that's going through goal droughts more? Is it keeping faith with him? and letting him play and letting him play and letting him get through it or take him out the team and let him ponder on it more do you know what it, it depends on the character because you get some some strikers or forwards that are are used to scoring goals like Son is because he scored a lot of goals for Spurs by the way but when you get players that are used to scoring goals and then you suddenly take them out they're going to either go one of, of two ways they're either going to like lose all their confidence and you lose the player or you've got, you got one that goes, don't you leave me out, don't you take me out, um, the goal's coming, you keep me in there, you keep me in there. So it always depends on the character. And I think for Son, he, I look at him and he's, I look at his nature and his character, I don't think he'd be one to to down tools and throw his, his toys at the prime. I just can't see him doing mm. that. But what he will do, and he works incredibly hard, he'll keep getting himself in the positions. And as you said, the, the worst thing he can do is if he starts hiding and, and changing his game a little bit, keep doing the same things and eventually one will hit him and go in the net but right now at the minute it's just not going for him and when you go 8-9 games without a goal you're testing your manager's mm. patience and when your performances haven't been great the manager has got the right to go well I don't know if I can keep playing you because you've got two other players in Kuliszewski and Richarlson that are doing it mm. uh, just a quick word on Marcus Edwards oh my goodness wow <laughs> we spoke about him yesterday. He's what twenty three years old. He was at Spurs for four years, twenty fifteen to twenty nineteen. Went on loan to Norwich. Didn't quite work out for I think for personal reasons there. But either way, he had a, not had a chance. But it, that people obviously saw something in him that was a little bit special mm. at Spurs. But then let go. And then we've we've seen. Let's not get too excited, right? But he has been. I don't know who by, but he has been likened to Messi for his dribbling skills. We saw that mm. a little bit last night. He looked. He looked great. There was one run. Yeah, we, we just hit it, I think, with the outside of his right with peg. Right, like he kind of toe it. He should have smashed it with left. Smash! Who, who am I to say no, what but you, know, done? you know what? And this going to sound crazy, but in that scenario, he had more time than he thought. Because when yeah. he hit it, he, he's on the stretch. If he just takes one more stride and the ball's comfortably in front of him, mm. then he could pick his spot, I, side foot, smash, whatever. I've seen that run from the camera behind the goal. His close control is it's incredible. It's Messi like. It is. Like I'm, I'm not comparing it to Messi. No, it's Messi like. But the way the ball was just stuck to his feet yeah, in tight great. areas. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he was a player. But yeah, as I think we spoke to Kevin Atchard last yesterday, and he said that he earned that move when he was at Gomerej. He, he did really well. Sporting come and bought him. And he looks like he's now developing into a top player. So you know what's going to happen. He's going to have one more season at Sporting. Man's as it. someone from the Premier League Man's will go, oh, yeah. we'll have him. 50 million. Yeah. yeah. Too early for him to even be spoken about in the same breath as players that could be on the plane right for the World Cup yeah of course, absolutely because you've got that many players that are probably ahead of him right now yeah. he's got, also as well he's got to have a consistent season like he played 12 games last season and he's played 6 games this year yeah you can't watch one game of football and go him no you exactly can't. you can't we need to see more of him Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker Talk Sport.